Hallelujah. Lord, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this hour. We ask that you come now and dwell among us. Have your way as we move through this service, God. We thank you, Lord, for all that you've done, all that you've carried us through. We thank you for St. Charles. We thank you for all those who are visiting with us near and far. So rest now with us, God, as we move in into giving you an even higher praise and all the glory and all the honor. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
that don't know, when your knees are not working, uh, the part is not working. Say so. Yeah. You get these old knees that work and you do yeah. things that God wants you to do. Yeah. You might not be able to kneel on them like you want to yeah. because of what they put in them. Uh-huh. Yes, I have titanium both knees. Uh, thank God yeah. I can walk. Yeah. I can dance. Yeah. I can shout. Yeah. So did you come to praise him on this day? Yes. Did you really come to praise God? Yes. To yes. show him that you appreciate what he's done for you. Yes. Maybe not for what you've done ah. for you, but maybe what he's done for your family. Come on. Someone in your family. Yes. Maybe a friend. Yes. But God has been good, church. Yes. He's good. Yes. Not good, but he's still in. Yeah, yeah. He's working out things for us right now. That we don't even know. My God. We learned this morning that he has foretold everything that's going to happen. And guess what? It has happened. Ah. Even his death, he knew it was going to happen. And he even knew who was going to do it. So, church, be ready. He's coming back. He's coming back. Our pastor reminds us every time he gets a chance to get your house in order. And how to do that? You keep washing and ironing, huh. cleaning, getting rid of stuff that's keeping you back. Jealousy, envy, huh. hatred. Get it out of your mind. Put God on your mind. Huh. He's the one who's going to work it out. God is a great God. So good morning, my fellow friends. Good morning. Good morning. But near and far. Yes. We just thank God that He allowed us another chance yes. to praise Him, yes. to honor Him, yes. and to serve Him. Yes. So as we celebrate on this day, we're just so thankful that God keep moving. Yes. He's still moving. Yes. And how do we know He's moving? Yes, because we can feel it. In our soul. Yeah. Good morning, dear. Those that are watching on social media, we welcome you this morning. Please, those that are traveling on their way here this morning, we just pray that God will continue to watch you over you, guide you, and allow you to reach this place so that you can give praise and thank the way that we are doing right now. This is our call to worship. Yes, God. I will worship the one yes. who comes the raging sea. I will worship the one who touches the raging thing. My hands I lift to you. My heart I lift to you. My voice I lift to you. I will worship you. This is our call to worship. Please stand and join me in singing the glory of our church. Joy, 
or just a closer walk with him. It's found on page 455 in your hymn. on a campaign. 
our campaign is just going to um, ignite us to do what we need to do. If you saw the sign that's out front, notice we don't have dates, the time, the who's doing what. We are just telling people that we are celebrating 10 years in this community. Amen. Yeah. Getting ready to celebrate this building for 100 years. And we have to make some noise because if we have been in this community for 10 years and we don't exist anymore and it doesn't bother anybody, then we never ever should have planted our feet here. So we are want to give it one last ditch effort to do what we need to do. I owe it to our youth, our young people. I told them, um, I told them on last uh, Sunday that I owe it to them. We owe them six good solid years that the Lord gives it to us to get them prepared to do the worship for us. And we need to get up, get out of the way, and support them so we can move ministry forward. Amen? Amen. We will talk more about that on Tuesday night. This afternoon, there is a 100, I'm sorry, 201 women in white. This is the first time that women are coming together to gather again in about four years with the New Hope Association. Um, please let me know if you're able to make it to join us this afternoon. We're looking to... Um, uh, represent Nia. Uh, they're doing something new, um, something different from what I'm uh, really a, 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 a fan of. You know, they're marching in, they have the church's name, the pastor's marching in with the church. And so we're going to support them this year. We're going to be a team player uh, this year uh, because this is the first time. It's the first time people will be gathering at Trinity um, Baptist Church in Newark again uh, since uh, the pandemic and the loss of their pastor. They're still looking for a pastor after some uh, three years. And so we want to go out and support them. They're going to be selling um, uh, dinners, also and sandwiches. Uh, it starts at 3 o'clock and we invite you to join us if you can. Um, and hopefully during our offering we can uh, collect some extra funds so that we can be able to either make our donation or come as close to our donation as possible. It would be uh, not that good of me to be a second vice moderator and not have my church participate in some kind of way, even if it's just me. I'll go and I'll stand in the gap and do what I have to do. But we have to fellowship. If we want people to fellowship with us, we have to fellowship with other people. I know I'm going to hear echoes off the wall, but if we don't fellowship, if you don't go visit nobody, they're not going to come visit you. Think about that. If you, if you, you want people to come visit you in your house, but you don't want to go to their house. And if we're going to do this thing called church, we have to every now and then make an effort to go out and, and visit. Uh, the month of July is presenting um, fellowship opportunities for us. I'll be preaching at the Morning Star Baptist Church. I believe on the 21st, and I'll be preaching at the Clearway Baptist Church on the 28th. So just get ready. We have a lot in store for us. Amen? Amen. We need to stay in prayer. We definitely need to stay in prayer. Um, I received just a challenging phone call um, from one of our, our members, one of our younger members. And so we want to keep our young um, Xavier Jacob um, in prayer. He's trying to make it through school. He's trying to make it on his own. He has very little family. His mom was a, a dear member of ours, and uh, he lost her uh, at some 17, 18 years old. And 19 years old, he's struggling. And so I'll be uh, reaching out to see if we have any other resources that will help him. But let's just keep him in prayer. Um, he's spending it on his own. And, and some of us know a little bit about that, having to uh, not have the support of family uh, to raise you. And you have a testimony to tell. And, and we need to let our young people know that even though when it looks bleak, that God will make a way out of no way. Do I have any witnesses here? We also want to keep my sister minister, Deborah Platt, uh, the family of Deacon Bowie, and the Samaritan Baptist Church in prayer. Um, they lost uh, Deacon Bowie on this morning, and um, he was a, a, a significant um, member of their church uh, that kept the church going and moving and motivated. And so this is a tough loss for the church. And so we share that we will be keeping them in prayer. Our job as a church is to ignite this community. 
And if we don't ignite it, and it won't get ignited. It's not for us to ignite ourselves on the inside. I know we want to have our church and have what we want, but this is not for us. In fact, it's not our church, it's God's church, amen? amen. So we have to pray, we have to fast, and we have to believe that God will make a way out of no way. We have to believe it with our service, we have to believe it with our giving. And I'm encouraging you all to get ready to buckle up and be prepared for what I'm about to present. And that allows us to get ready for prayer time because yeah. we need to pray. We need to pray because we are definitely in need in a time such as this. And so I invite you, I invite you to stand for prayer as we get ready and the musicians pray. I want you to just think about the goodness of God and what he has done for you and all that you ask for him for and how he has been able to make a way out of nowhere. So, when we think of there is none like you, there is none like the God that we serve. I don't know other people have who they worship or whomever, but I know that when I pray to God, there is a feeling that comes over me that encompasses my soul body and my spirit. So as I think in Harris prepares us for prayer, I want you to get ready with the song, There is None Like You. There is
Let us pray. <laughs> oh God. Yes, Lord. Lord God, Lord God. Yes. Almighty Father, you are such a giving and loving God. Holy is your name. We your people near come humbly seeking to be in your presence on this day, Lord. You blessed us to see a new day. A day with new graces and new mercies that you have freely given to us, Lord. And we are so, so grateful. We thank you, Lord, that this is a brand new opportunity to live our best life for you. You want it that way, Lord. You want that for us. Because it was you, only you, who woke us up this morning. You have provided for us everything we need to get to this place of worship, God. And we just want to thank you. When we think about how you kept us from danger seen and unseen, from times when we didn't even realize all that you've done or were doing for us, we just want to burst out in a praise of hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, we just want to put all our trust in you, God. Yes. Turn over our whole purpose, our whole life of living over to you. Yes. Strengthen us, Lord, against all doubt. Yeah. For we know that you have shown us time and yeah. time again yeah. there is no difficulty bigger than you. There are no promises that you cannot keep. Your promises are true. You promised to never leave us off for sake of the Lord. And we know it to be right, true. You promised when you chose us that nothing and no one could separate us from the power of your love for us. And now we believe that with all our heart. This promise is very true. So God, here we are. Some of us are sick. Physically, spiritually, emotionally. Some of us are suffering in need or lack. And with all kinds of human situations. But you know us, Lord. Yes. You know our situation. Yes. You know what's best for us. You know better than we know yes. what to ask for. So we thank you, Lord, in advance for doing just what you do. Yes. Continue to do what you do, God. Yes. We know you're a mighty, mighty big God. Yes. And there's nothing too big for you to handle. May your will be done in our lives as we delight ourselves in you, God. May your will be done for us here on earth as it is in heaven. Forgive us our transgressions one against another and remove anything from our heart, mind, soul, spirit that might be a hindrance to your blessings being poured out on us here, your people. Bless us, Lord God, one by one, and then, Lord, look around and bless us all together in the Fellowship Baptist Church. We stand in need of a blessing, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for your word, Master, our Master of the Word, our beloved Pastor Platt. Bless him and keep him and protect him and send him who and what he needs yes. to see your vision through. Yes, Bless our genuine and kind-hearted First Lady, Bless Lady Lord. Dr. Gwen. Bless the Lord. Strengthen her in her ever endeavors yes. to take care of Pastor, yes. her family, and her church. Yes. We thank you, Lord, for all you do. We pray for our young people near and far. Protect, protect them, Lord. Keep your hands around them. Let them know that you will never leave them off forsaken. 
They have to deal with things we never imagined that they would have to deal with. But help them to know when mama and daddy doesn't know what to do. Jesus knows it all. And he will fix it for them. But you have to know how to call on them. And you have to not be afraid to call on them. And not ashamed. Now, Lord, you know we need a special blessing here at this church. Please, God, put the people in place to make it happen. Dear God, please put in our hearts and our minds what we need to do. Make us willing servants of your word and of your way. As for me, Lord God, I am so blessed. Every time I look around, there's another blessing. Thank you for every step I take. Yeah, God. And hopefully, God, my steps are closer to you, closer to you each and every day. Thank you for a loving husband. Thank you for supporting family and friends. Bless them, keep them, protect them. Surround them, Lord, with your precious blood. Strengthen me when I'm weak. Comfort me against any fears. And please, God, put in the hearts of all this near family to pray for each other, to pray for our needs here at Nia, and to pray just in worship of you, standing in the need of prayer. Keep our country, Lord, our leaders, our government. We know that you are omnipotent, that everything comes under your control. Bring justice where there is lack of justice and righteousness where there is lack of righteousness. And we will never fail to say thank you and give you all the praise and all the glory, because only you can do what needs to be done. We thank you, God, with all our heart, soul, and mind, and we pray this prayer in the precious, holy name of Jesus, your Son and our Savior. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Amen. 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 Can touch my heart like you I can search for all eternity, Lord, and find where it's gone like you. Come on, as you're seated in his presence, just say, There is a Preach, Pastor Platt. Preach, Pastor Platt. Preach, Pastor Platt. 
Use him for your glory, dear God. Use him for your glory, dear God. Amen. Amen.
There is a word from the Lord, and we invite you to Romans, the 8th chapter, starting at the 18th verse. We'll be reading 18 through 22, and then skipping down to 26 and 27. Romans, the 8th chapter. I'll be reading from the New Living Translation. If you have it, if you're able to, please stand to your feet as we reverence reading of the word of God as it is preached. Romans, the 8th chapter, starting at verse 18, New Living Translation. And the word of the Lord reads, Yet what we suffer now is nothing compared to the glory he will reveal to us later. For all creation is waiting eagerly for that future when God will reveal who his children really are. Against its will, all creation was subject to God's curse. But with eager hope, the creation looks forward to the day when it knows what the Spirit is saying. For the Spirit pleads for us believers in harmony with God's own will. And the word of the Lord is blessed. I come to preach to you this morning from the subject, Growing Pains with God. Growing pains with God. Let us pray. Eternal God, our Father, we thank you for your mercy and your grace. God, we thank you because you have been better to us than we have ever been to ourselves. And so, God, now we stand to hear what you have to say to us. And so, God, I ask that you would stand up and sit me down. Hide me behind the cross. Allow the people to see and hear you and not me. Let them have a spiritual reckoning, a spiritual awakening, because this word spoke to somebody. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. Growing pains with God. Growing pains with God. This week has been a week that has been life-changing in so many ways. For many of us, probably personally and, and probably changing in ways we would not even want to talk about. But one thing that we do know, the course of history has been affected by the guilty verdict of Donald Trump, who was our former president. Yet he and the law and order party claims that he is still innocent when he has been proven guilty by a jury of his peers. Right. And we see privilege at its highest level when we say uh, about someone else to lock them up and talk about what they hadn't done and, and talk about them not doing what they're supposed to do that when it shows up on your plate, you don't want the same kind of of discipline or punishment. Yet they're still mourning in our country because the Obama family lost Michelle Obama's mother, who was the matriarch of the family. She showed America uh, what it's like to be a family. Showed America, America's women, what it's like when the mother of the children has a task at hand and how the grandmother can step up and help keep the family going. She showed what a, a village really, really looks like. And yet, uh, in my own family, my wife's family, along with the teeth out smelling family, laid to rest the untimely death of a cousin all the way from Virginia. And so when you look at all these things happening, uh, the young people would say, life be life thing. Oh, and for those of you who are not up to your slang or your urban language, that means life is going to happen right. no matter what. Right. Right. The days are going to go on no matter what. Yeah. No matter whether you come to church, right. whether you don't come to church, whether you have a problem with church, Life is going to happen. All we can say to our younger generation that uh, is that Christians, as Christians, all of this is a part of our growing pains with God. In order for 
us to grow and that we sometimes don't feel it, but these are the things that happen. A writer by the name of Kathy Irvin, who, who has the same name similar to our late choir director, Kathy Irving, she wrote a devotional entitled The Growing Pains of Faith. And in the devotional, she asked the question, is it painful to grow as a Christian? It is a question that many of us uh, have asked ourselves and we seek to, as we seek to develop a closer relationship with God. When Irvin asked the Lord that question, she said God's response was, it is. I have found out for myself that at this stage of my life, I agree with her because of the way I look at life now at 63 versus the way I looked at life at 23. Life has taught me so much that I understand what it means to go through a growing process, especially a spiritual one. The Holy Spirit has helped me to deal with my own imperfections, and it has held me accountable to God and to myself in so many ways. My godly attitude and approach has been developed because I embrace the fruit of the Spirit, the fruit of love, joy, peace, long-suffering, greatness, uh, uh, goodness, faith, I'm sorry, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, and temperance. I had to embrace that to help me through so many things that I've seen and I have encountered in my life. And with all of the abusive and horrific situations that I've seen or been a part of, God has still supplied all of my needs. In spite of my wants, God's grace has been sufficient for me, sufficient enough to help me build character, and he continues to do so each and every day as long as I trust him. And that's why I'm very careful to be critical or judgmental of others. I know there's a whole lot of people who like to point their fingers and be critical and judgmental of others, but all I want you to do is take a good look at the mirror. And when you start talking about other folks and what they don't do, what they can't do, and how they do whatever, take a good look in the mirror. Come on. You are not far from being judged yourself. Recently, my grandson had been saying his knees hurt. My daughter was concerned that she took, uh, she, she said she would take care of him and take him to the doctor. But she also said to him that he needed to maybe exercise a little bit more. Maybe he needed to move around a little bit more. But that wasn't enough. You know, his, his grandmother, his, his Gigi, who happens to be, uh, you know, uh, old school in her ways, uh, she began to say um, um, something that she was brought up. And she said, oh, he's just having growing pain. I kind of looked sideways. I said, growing pains. But I, I knew that was my, my mother-in-law speaking out of her mouth, you know. Uh, you know, but that means that there is nothing physically wrong with him. That he is growing, but obviously he feels pain in his body. And he doesn't understand it. And, and so he, he knows he, he feels this pain. Uh, um, he, he, he knows that it's there and he can't understand it. Uh, but what he also knows is that he has a mama and he has a grandma. Right. And mama's love and grandma's love is just a little bit different than the other family love. Uh, because that love of concern is somewhat of a healing concern. Uh, right. Unfortunately, his uh, grandfather left his ministry for the church. Uh -huh. See, their love was ministering to him, and the grandpa just said, uh, his legs hurt. Uh, if he wants to be an athlete, he needs to work through it. He didn't want to hear that. Yeah, you know, your pastor failed in the grandson ministering test. Uh, my wife and I, uh, uh, my wife and my daughter taught me how to minister to my grandson. And I learned a little something about soothing and what soothing will do for you. Uh, uh, Irvin wrote in her devotional, she said, when we allow the Lord to minister to us, his touch is so soothing. God's love is soothing, so soothing. It's like the loving concern of a mother and, and, a, and a daughter and a, um, um, and a wife for a grandson. And when we really let God have control of our lives, we can feel God helping us feel better. Some of us don't feel better because we won't let go and let God have control of 
of our life. We are too busy trying to control God and to control our lives instead of letting go and let God control our lives. God's strokes of love causes us to be healed and to grow to be more like him. That is why we do what we do because we should long to be more like God. We must come to him during those times we need him and let him pour his grace, pour his love, and pour his peace upon us. The journey may seem to be too hard, but if you allow the Holy Spirit to deal with you in certain areas, the process will be easier and the burden of pain in our life will be lighter. You don't believe me? Just go to Matthew, the 11th chapter, verses 28 through 30. Jesus says, come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. And then he goes on and he said, take my yoke upon you and learn of me for I am gentle and humble in heart and you will find rest in your soul for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. In the text, Paul's perspective, uh, we, we see Paul's perspective and he has previously written that all who are in Christ are heirs to God's kingdom with Christ. Since all who are in Christ will share in his suffering before sharing in his glory. This begins a powerful message in which Paul discusses living as a Christian through the suffering that comes with life on earth. God does not want us to suffer, but this is part of the process. Somebody say process. It is part of the process that we have to go through when we wake up in the morning, when we lay down at night, when we get diagnosed, when things are going on. I'm talking to somebody. It's just part of a process and the design that God had for us and he has a different process for all of us individually. Right. Right. And some Bible teachers suggest that Paul is referring only to suffering caused by persecution for the faith of Christ. Based on the full context of the passage, however, there is every reason to understand that Paul, or understand Paul to include everyday suffering that comes with living Living on this sin-stained planet, he will be clear that it is experienced by all creatures. If you go to Romans 8.20, it's not just us as human, but all creatures. But that only those who are in Christ look forward to sharing the glories of God's kingdom afterwards. And I come to tell somebody, I don't know what you're dealing with, I don't know what your challenges is going to be, but there is a greater glory beyond whatever you're going through right Paul's perspective is that our present sufferings are not even worth holding up in comparison to the glories that will be revealed in us. Paul is elevating glory to come through. He, he's into, to come through for all of us. And we have to take a look at that. Many of you don't even realize, and many, most of you kind of grew up a long time ago, and you grew up way before me. I'm a city boy, but you grew up in the South, and you understand what it's like to really work. Yeah, we go to, you know, we got a job today, but you know what it's like to really work. Some of you been in those fields. Some of you picked some cotton. Some of you crops some tobacco. Some of you did a little of that. There's some of you who are in other countries uh, who came here. You know what it's like to work in the hot sun and what you have to do. Uh, but guess what? When you thought it was too much for you, you never in your wildest dreams thought that God would place you where he has placed you today to live the way you live right now. And this is part of the notice to you that things will get better. He understood pain very deeply. Paul in 2 Corinthians 11, 23 to 29, he said, we see, a small, we see a small sampling of his experiences, hunger, thirst, danger, imprisonment, torture, and persecution. And yet he says, all of that suffering cannot compare to the glory that we will be revealed at some future time to save believers as God's heirs in Christ. We are not going through these challenges for nothing. We're not dealing with political and leadership crazy. 
craziness for nothing. Uh, we're not dealing with the fact that we get challenged uh, by the whole fear mongering that's going on. Uh, oh, you better vote or you know what's going to happen. Uh, or if you don't, don't vote, you don't know what's going to happen. Uh, I'm not going to get caught up into that. I'm just saying we need to vote because we fought the vote and we need to get out and vote and make sure that we have given our voice because the end is going to be what it's going to be. Uh, but whether we have Trump or whether we have Biden, it don't really matter to me right now. All you need to have is Jesus and you can get through what you need to get through. Without Christ, we can never participate in God's glory because of our sin. In Christ, as God's fully adopted heirs, we will fully experience his glory forever. In spite of all trials, in spite of growing pains, or whatever you choose to call them, thank God there is a way out. Tell somebody there's a way out. And the way out is Jesus. He promised that he would make an escape through every trial and every situation. I'm so glad that Jesus makes the escape. So as I close, I don't know about you. Oh, but I don't want to be like the Israelites wandering around for 40 years, going around the same mountain over and over again. You know what? If you keep doing the same thing over and over again, expecting a different result, then you are just plumb crazy. I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to keep coming here over and over again every Sunday morning, being on Facebook and seeing y'all on YouTube and just doing the same thing over and over. The devil is a liar. I'm going to do something new. I'm going to do something different. I'm going to change. I'm going to praise God so that God will get the glory out of this. Anybody want God to get the glory out of what you're doing? In the words of my good friend, Bishop Vincent Rouse, grief cannot be compared to God's glory. God wants you to be a glory story. That is why there is a praise on the other side of your pain. You can turn your pain into praise. I heard our deaconess before she began to pray. And some of you were watching it, and she was having a little struggle there. But when she got herself comfortable and was ready to go pray, to pray. Before she even prayed God, she prayed to God. She praised God because she knew that if it had not been for God she wouldn't be able to praise Him. She wouldn't be able to pray to Him. She wouldn't be able to worship Him. And some of you missed a shout right there because you should have jumped up and started shouting just because of that. You can turn your pain into praise if you embrace your growing pains with God by your side. Anybody want to have some strength. Look at your neighbor and say, you need him by your side. Jesus had a praise on the other side of this pain on the cross. That's why we remember him. When we commune today, we're remembering that Jesus had God on his side. He was crucified on the cross, but in three days he rose from the grave. And when he rose, he rose with all power in his hands. Why did he have power, Pastor Black? So he can set me free and he can set you free. Not from the other people outside, but some of us need to be free from our own self, free from our own ignorance, free from our own attitude, free from our own situation. God wants us to be free. Somebody say free. free. He wants you to be free. He embraces growing pains as he had God by his side. He had God on the other side of his pain. And with God by his side, his praise brought power. Let somebody know that you're growing pains with God. Just let them know. They say, I feel sorry for you. Say, baby, don't feel sorry for me. I'm going through this with God. I'm not in this boat by myself. We're going to keep moving forward. That is why you logged on today. That is why you kind of picked up this sermon today. Because somebody needed to know that you got to go through with God. And sometimes you're going to cry a little bit. Sometimes you're going to hurt a little bit. But if you've got God on your side, you are going to be delivered. Somebody said be delivered. You're growing pains with God. That is why you came to church. You're growing pains with God. That is why you lift your hands and praise Him. You're growing pains with God. That's why you still believe in your children and your grandchildren. You're growing pains with God. That's why you just won't give up when everybody's giving up. When everybody stopped coming. When everybody stopped logging on. You're growing pains with God. And if God be for you, who can be against you? 
neighbor. Tell your neighbors and neighbor. Jesus is on the other side. So praise him. Say neighbor. Jesus is on the other side.
Avenue in New Brunswick, New Jersey. They have Tangent Cobb, Lenore Davis, David Cross, Wanda Muslim, the Jenkins brothers, longtime good friends of mine. And uh, it's hosted by Valerie Adams, and so many of you have heard her band before. So rain or shine, it's free for all ages. Middlesex County, if you want to have some good gospel music. And next month we have our David Shoe Scholarship. Tickets are $85, $85 is for a great cause. As we um, encourage teens to honor their life, we will be giving out scholarships as we normally do with our mentoring program. It's going to be at the Galloping Hill Caterers, 12 to 4 on July 13th, Saturday. You can see me for tickets. We pray that you put your gifts in your hand and we ask that uh, if we would, if we have another basket, I would invite you to join me in giving as we give to our benevolent offering and our church's offering. I'm going to start another basket offering off for $25 towards this afternoon's program. Um, they're asking for $250. I know we're, we're challenged as a church, but I just believe that God will help us to make a way out of no way. When you give to others, then others will give to you. And so I invite you, if you could, um, help uh, out our, uh, our church fund. The rest I'm giving online. Um, for my tithes and offering, I'll be giving online. And if you're giving online with me with your tithes and offering, please take your phone. Take your phone and tap the basket as you give online to our our benevolent offering and our tithes and general offering. Um, tap the, the basket with your phone just as an indicator so people can see that you are joining in in your giving. Amen? We just want to thank God forever and forever for all he has done for us. And we invite you to stand to your feet, get excited about giving, and thank him in the process.
mercy and your grace. God, we thank you for those who gave. We thank you for those who desired to give but did not have to give. God, we thank you for the giving spirit. And God, we pray that in our giving uh, that we are testing what you said in your word. You said if we bring our tithes and offering into the storehouse, you would pour out blessings we don't have room enough to receive. Oh God, we're looking for a miracle. We're looking for a blessing. We expect the impossible. We receive the intangible. God, we do that because of our relationship with you. Touch, heal, deliver. And God, most of all, give us the spirit of praise that will draw people to build up your kingdom with us. In Jesus' name we pray. The people of God say... that you would prepare now for the church covenant. Prepare for the church covenant as we dedicate our worship back to him in communion. If you don't have it on your phone, there should be a copy uh, in the pew that you can read from the church covenant. Join me as we read it in chorus together. Having been led as we believe by the Spirit of God to receive the Lord Jesus Christ as our Savior and on the profession of our faith, having been baptized in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, we do now in the presence of God, angels and this assembly, most solemnly and joyfully enter into covenant with one another as one body in Christ. We engage, therefore, by the aid of the Holy Spirit to walk together in Christian love, to strive for the advancement of this church and knowledge and holiness, to give a place in our affections, prayers, and services above every organization of human origin, to sustain its worship, ordinances, discipline, and doctrine, to contribute cheerfully and regularly as God has prospered us towards its expenses, for the support of the faithful and evangelical ministry among us, the relief of the poor, and the spread of the gospel throughout the world. In case of difference of opinion in the church, we will strive to avoid a contentious spirit, and if we cannot unanimously agree, we will cheerfully recognize the right of the majority to govern. We also engage to maintain family and secret devotion, to study diligently the word of God, to religiously educate our children, to seek the salvation of our kindred and acquaintance, to walk circumspectly in the world, to be kind and just to those in our employ, and faithful in the service we promise others, endeavoring in the purity of heart and goodwill towards all men to exemplify and commend our holy faith. We further engage to watch over, to pray for, to exhort and stir up each other unto every good word and word, to guard each other's reputation, not needlessly exposing the infirmities of others, to participate in each other's joys, and with tender sympathy, bear one another's burdens and sorrows, to cultivate Christian courtesy, to be slow to give or take offense, but always ready for reconciliation being mindful of the rules of the Savior in the 18th chapter of Matthew to secure it without delay and through life amid evil rapport and good rapport to seek to live to the glory of God who had called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. When we remove from this place, we engage as soon as possible to unite with some other church where we can carry out the spirit of this covenant and the principle of God's word. We pray that you would abide by each and every line of that covenant as we join in preparing ourselves for communion. We invite 
our deacons to come forward, our ministerial staff to come forward, and our deaconess to come forward as we prepare the communion table for communion. Let us break bread together on our knees. Let us
because you're growing hands are with God by your side After they communed, they went out into the Mount of Olives and they sang hymns and they were reminded of the, the joy of the Lord being their strength. And we're reminded that growing with Him, our growing pains with Him gives us strength, power, and praise. And they sang hymns and we're reminded of a particular song, Psalm 23, which is prophetic, which it can carry us through. I pray our children learn it, remember it. I learned it as a child. And if you can, if you don't know it, read it, learn it, and keep it by your heart every day. Recite with me the 23rd Psalm. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod, thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest the table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. 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 I trust that you take this day and let this be the first day of the rest of your life of praise with God. Keep living your best life in Christ, Amen. and he will do the rest. There is a blessing, a great blessing on his way. You just have to believe God. Amen? Amen. Amen. There is power, wonder-working power in the blood of the Lamb. We receive that power, we accept it, and we receive all of the miracles that come with it. it 